direct into the word. Yeah. I'm so sorry my voice is very low because I'm smaller than you. <laughs> so, we will just have a simple word of God for today because from the succeeding days, I observed that um, after the worship, some are <laughs> okay, we will just have a quick review of our worship of our services for the last one month. Oh, congratulations! Yes, okay, my already had finished for one month. Oh, <laughs> so, what is our first topic before that? <laughs> now you forgot. Okay, it always starts small. Okay, you remember who preached that? It is Brother Babesh, the Indian white guy. Imagine, there is white Indian. Okay, and it was found in Zechariah 4:10. It says, "For who has despised the day of small things?" That means, do not look down. Do not belittle the small things. Amen? Amen. Because Jesus Christ was born in a very simple way, in a very small way, but yet his action, his love is overflowing. Amen. Amen. Yes, Next topic. Pastor Alvin told us about revealed. And what is that revealed? Ephesians 1:18. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light. Yes. Amen. Amen. So that you can see something in the future He has called you to share. I want you to realize that God has been made rich because we who are in Christ has been given to Him. And it was followed by the angels empowered by the Holy Spirit wherein the first deliverance in this house has been done. Amen. 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 It is the power of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit who will continue to give us that light. Who will remove all the other spoken words against us. All the things that has been done against us. Yes. Amen. And we didn't know that. Some of us are not aware of the things that is happening because it is more spiritual. Amen. And then, last Friday was taught us by Brother Angel again the true light. Who is that true light? Jesus. Jesus. Yes, Jesus. It was found in Matthew 3, 19 to 21. It's the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness. It's very true, right? Yes. It's not because we are dark. Yeah. Not because we love darkness. Yeah. Because we have sin. But because we have found the light and the light has dwelt among us. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. If you're doing something that is wrong, then we will hide behind the door. Because what if my husband see that I'm doing something wrong? Alas. <laughs> but whoever lives in the truth comes into the light so that I might be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. Amen. Amen. So our topic for tonight, uh, for today, sorry, today is still day. <laughs> I'm used to midweek service and it's my first time to teach and to preach in an international community. <laughs> so, so our topic can be found in Matthew 14 verses 13 to 21. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It is feeding the 5,000. And it can be found also in Mark 6, 30 to 44, Luke 9, 10 to 17, and John 6, 1 to 14. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, I will just read first in Matthew. When Jesus heard it, uh, before, it uh, before this starts, there is something that happened between Jesus and the disciples. Jesus sent forth the 12 people, the 12 disciples, to go and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ two by two, not one by one. Why two by two? So that whenever that someone has lost, someone can redirect. And some, if, if that one person can be stopped, one can fight back to save that one. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. But when he sent this 12, there is something happened to Jesus Christ. Did you, did you have experience that you have lost someone 
love of your life? Have you lost your mother, your father, your brother, and your sister? I have lost my two brothers. It's not my real brother, but I lost the two boys in my life who took, uh, who took care of me when I was still young. So in this time, um, John the Baptist, the, the cousin of Jesus Christ, was beheaded. So imagine, you are alone, your disciples are not with you, and then something happened. Someone killed your dearest brother. I don't know what is that feeling of Jesus Christ because he is alone. But what he did is like as human as us, he also departed. He made himself alone. Okay, I don't want to see any other people. I don't want to be with other people. I want to be alone. But when he is alone, he is with his father. And that is Father God. Amen. So when... Okay, after that, these 12, this 12 disciples came back. And when they heard, when Jesus heard in verse 13, he departed from there by the boat and deserted place by himself. But when the multitudes heard it, so we even say multitudes. Say multitudes. Multitudes. That means group of people. Yeah. They followed him on foot from cities. Imagine, from cities. Nigeria is a very big place. But you came from different places of Nigeria to come here in this place and now see, imagine. We have some Americans, we have Filipinos, we have Nigerians here. Internationally, we came together to worship and to see who is that real God. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude and he was moved with compassion. He was deeply sorrowed by the loss of his brother, of his cousin John. And the disciples are very, very tired. Imagine you go without anything, just your sandals. Coming here without eating is very hard, my <laughs> friends. It's very hard to eat without breakfast because I'm used to have breakfast. But here, the disciples came very tired and very hungry, and they found their master so in sorrow this um, appearance. But Jesus is still moving compassion. Compassion means having the same sorrow, feeling the same sorrow that you have. And we feel sorrow not because he feels sorrow for himself, but because he saw the needs of the people. And how can he fulfill that sorrow? How can he saw these people that they are like the sheep without the shepherd? And in the evening, so he pitched. Okay, and heal their sick in verse 15. When it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, Lord, this is a deserted place and the hour is already late. Send the multitudes away that they may go into the village and buy themselves food. Imagine. Lord, very, we're very, very tired, Lord. And you came from a certain place where and you came alone. And these people are very, very hungry. Imagine. Could you please let them, let them go? Because we cannot eat them. Okay? But Jesus said to them in verse 15, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. Imagine. You are in a small, in a very plain place without anything. And they said, we have only five loaves and two fish. Five loaves and two fish. What are those seven things in your life that you can ever offer to the Lord and can feed the other people? Do you think it will fit and you can eat only five loaves and seven fish, uh, two fish? But Jesus said, bring them here. Bring them here. Then he commanded the multitudes to sit down. Okay? And he took the five loaves and two fish, looking up to the heaven. He blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples, and disciples gave to the multitude. This is the verse 20. And I really like how the translation in NIV it says there's um, our title. So they, uh, so they, they, they all ate and were filled. They were filled with the food. Imagine for five loaves and two fish. It will not be enough for me and my Alvin. For Alvin, it's nothing. 
<laughs> it's not enough for us, but it can feed 5,000 men. Imagine you big guys can be, can be fed by five loaves and two fish only. Amen? Amen. And so they all ate and were filled, and they took up the 12 baskets full of fragments that you need. Now, those who had eaten were about 5,000 men besides women and children. And this is the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Imagine that when you are alone and feel sorrow and painful, I, we experience both of me on the family. We experience that we lost someone. And we doesn't want to eat without, we don't want to eat, we don't want to drink, we just wanted to be alone. But when we, when we uh, have these comforting words from the Word of God, we have to stand up. We don't have to die with the people who died already. Right? But what had Jesus had given here is that, yes, He departed Himself, but He knows where to come to. Who to, who to be with? Is there a time in your life wherein you don't know what to do, but still you have to work and you have to stand and you have to walk up because you know that something is waiting for you? Jesus did the same. He was so sorrowful, no one was there for, for him. The disciples are very tired, yet they have to accommodate these people. Because these people is looking for Jesus. They want to see miracles. They want to see healings in the sicknesses. They want to see that miracles as well. Because Jesus has said in His words that more things can be done when I am not with you. Because it is the Holy Spirit who will be with us. When we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that's when the Holy Spirit comes in. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, in the book of John, we will go in the book of John, it says here that after that, he was questioned. He questioned the people, actually. Why do you came from me? Is it because you are filled with five loaves and two fish? That's the main reason. But Jesus told them that, no, it should not be like that. I am the bread of life. Who comes to me shall never hunger, and who believes in me shall never thirst. It is in John um, chapter 6, verse 35. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Amen. It's so hard to believe, right? <laughs> because we are more on to see is to believe. I am... I am a person who wanted to see the proof. If you're telling me something, I want a proof. If you buy something, I need a receipt. But Jesus was telling, I am the bread and of life. And no one who comes to me will get thirsty or will get hungry. And I was reminded of the Samaritan woman. Do you ever know this the story of Samaritan woman? Yes. She went to the wet at 12 in the morning oh, in, uh, mid noon yeah. it's very hot right if you will come in summer and then you have to dig a well and get some water for yourself it's very hard for a woman to take a bucket and walk alone but jesus said there that uh um if just uh, if you would know whom you are speaking to then you would have asked to give that, that guy to give you a water. Okay, could you please give me that water, sir? That woman didn't hesitate to believe that Jesus Christ is the one who came from God. And the first thing that she said is that, are you a prophet? But since Jesus told her about her past, it made that encounter with Jesus Christ to have this lady saved from her sins. And from that on, then, since she has an encounter with Jesus Christ, she never go back to her sin. Having five husbands is very difficult. Imagine you have to serve them every day. <laughs> different, different person. Right? Yeah. But because of Jesus Christ, 
she was able to release from that guilt on her life. I hope that every one of us here has an encounter with Jesus Christ. I always say it to anyone that if you have a unique encounter with Jesus Christ, you will be able to stand here to share to the people around us how good God is to us. Yes. And you will be able to testify the test that this evil has been given to us. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a very simple um, teaching wherein some people is very hard to understand. How come God can be our bread and our water? But Jesus was telling us that we should not look on physical things, but we should look on spiritual things because our life is not here on earth. Yes, we are here, but it's just temporary. But our life belongs to Him. Our uh, We should look on the uh, heavenly things than the earthly things. But Jesus was able to be tempted as well. But still, He was able to survive. Not because He is God. Have you ever tried to fast and pray? Yes. Good. Those who have uh, tried to do the fasting and prayer, well, it's very good experience as well. Because there, that is the time where in the Lord was moved so much. If you are full, then there's so many things on your mind that will come. I feel so sleepy. I want to do this morning. I have so many things to do. But when we are fasting and prayer, that means we are very focused on that encounter with Jesus Christ. Lord, I want to heal that person. I want you to heal that man. I want you to deliver that baby safe and sound with the mother. And Jesus says, yes, I will. In Jesus' name, everything is yes and amen. But it is our faith that will continue to move in our lives that He will be able to do anything succeedingly and um, overflowing in every aspect of our lives. We always pray for blessings. But are we doing something to receive that blessing? This multitude of people came to Jesus cities by cities without anything in their lives. They just, so they say, by foot, imagine there's no car. <laughs> they have to find Jesus for so difficult, different places because Jesus knows how to hide himself. But the people used to find him. They used to find him because it is only Jesus who can fulfill what is missing in our life. When I was still in the world, I used to have, um, I don't smoke, I don't, um, it's a quite a short testing money. I don't um, drink, but I know that something is missing in me. I have money, I have good uh, life, I have everything that I wanted to have, but because uh, I, I, I don't drink and I don't smoke, but it's still, I, I, I love how the world could ever live like that. I like cities. I like because I was born in um, in a province or in most of the communities, um, not able to have this uh, disco things and more of the lights. So I experienced. I I tried. I I I, I experimented just to have an experience. But there is something still small thing. That even these other people come to me and comfort me and go with them and have happy things and so many stories, so many lives encounter. But still, there is something not nothing can ever fulfill that hole in my life. Until that one night, a uh, one day, that one friend of mine gave me a Bible, and I was thinking, that, Lord, what should I do with this Bible? I know how to pray. I go to the church. But it's still something is missing in me. And I, I pray to the Lord that, Lord, if you really wanted me to use for your kingdom, then do something for me. My family is in good health. Everything was done. Like the business is okay. Everything is okay. But there is something, see, very small thing. But still, that thing, you will not be able to, I'm not still complete. So when I 
when I had this Bible, I immediately uh, opened it in the book of Psalms. And it's very clear that I hear that small voice. As far as east is from the west, that's how I forget your sins. And I was moved on that word. Because I have done so many things in my life, but still, something is missing. So when I heard that uh, encounter with Jesus Christ, I thought, ah, this is how much the Lord has um, loved me. This is how far is the Lord have loved me. He will forget my sins from from beginning, from, from when I was still young, until I grow now. And from that on, I didn't depart on that um, encounter. I always testify this whenever that I'm, you don't have to go enumerate what are the things that you have done, but still you have to magnify the goodness of the Lord. Because only Jesus Christ can be able, will be the one who is able to supply all our needs. Yes, we don't have job. But we are in good health. We are powered by our brothers who can give us food. We have clothes. We are still blessed. We should know how to count our blessings. The five loaves and two fish was being counted. They didn't say that we have only loaves, we have only fish. They counted. What are those seven things on your hand that you have at the moment? Little talents? Little family? Count your blessings. And when you're counting your blessings, you will be able to magnify the goodness of the Lord yes. in your life. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Always declare unto yourself 1 Peter 2.9 But I am a chosen people, yes, a royal priesthood, mm. a holy nation, God's special possession, that I may declare the praises of Him who called me from my darkness into His marvelous light. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So for everything that He has done in us, I really admire how you were able to worship the Lord in a very small place, but yet your voice is reaching on that place. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Always declare the goodness of God. Amen. Only Him can satisfy us. Yes, Only Lord. Him can fill that small hole in our lives. Only Him can ever give us that bread and um, water. Because it is Him who created us and He knows what we need. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except That's through Him. Me. And it's the same with us. We have an encounter with Jesus, with Jesus Christ and we should be the one who will bless the people. Sister, I only have this type of thing. I can only clean this place. I can only drop the people. I can only just say hello to the people. But still, your good deeds, whom God has entrusted you before He created you, will be able to be the one who will, be, uh, who will bring forth people to come and know Jesus Christ. Always remember, brothers, and my sister there, because we are still two until now, <laughs> and hoping and we are praying for more women behind to come here and worship together with you, because uh, people are not created for men only. <laughs> yes. We should be all together. Amen. The Father's purpose should prevail. It's not by culture. It's not for Nigeria only. It's not for Kenyan people only. It's all for everyone. And it's the purpose of Father's heart. It's the heart of Father that you and I will come and worship Him and dance with Him and clap our hands to Him in spirit and in truth freely. You know what? In Dubai sometimes, um, just a very uh, short uh, story. We have this kind of situation where we cannot worship freely. They will. Uh, there are some CIDs. You know, these CIDs are uh, those policemen who are wearing only white, yeah. uh, not white, uh, only shirts. Yeah. And they will sit behind and they will uh, close that uh, facility after that. So. 
we, we pray, we, we fast that Lord move in the land of the vine. Because only the guy is the one who holds this worship thing. So we come to the point that uh, uh, for 80 people, only 30, 30 people can join physically in a very big hall. And the seat is not like this. You have to sit two, two meters or three meters far from one another. And it's not quite, we are not used to that situation, but it feels like something is wrong, something is missing, because it's very good to worship um, together with the Father, with other people. And most of the time, there comes to the point that only workers can come in the service. Oh my gosh, it's your face again. I don't want to see other people. But then we come to know that Little by little, the, the Lord is moving and touching the hearts of those who are in the Torah in the Bible. Now we are able again to bring back the people. And it's very good feeling. Worship together with you is a very nice thing. There's no Friday here that I didn't cry. Oh. <laughs> I always cry whenever we praise and we worship. Because you can really feel the presence of God. Amen. Imagine. What if all of us will come together with those people who are doing their suppers? It's your assignment. <laughs> bring them here or bring them in the new church because you will live there, right? Yes, I don't know. Yeah, it's a very big place we're in. You can pick all. If you need more, we will rent more. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we thank you for the prayer for the church. I was moved on that prayer. You know, it's very seldom that you will find people who will pray for the church. Yes, we know that we are the church and we should declare it to ourselves, but we should do our part. Like us disciples did in their part. Like Jesus did in their part. Just to fulfill that missing piece in us. In the lives of the other people. The other people will not, Jesus will not be able to come now just to satisfy us back again. But it is the Holy Spirit that is within us who will be able to satisfy the multitudes that is around us. Right, Father? Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. So when we went out, as Jesus went out and saw the multitudes, so we have to do also. We have to move out on this place. We should not be contented that we are just 30, 40 people here. Jesus would like to see us thousands and thousands and thousands. Yeah, we should have that same compassion as He has. Compassion wherein we can feel the need of the people. We can feel the urge to, to give what they need, not what they want. They want Jesus to be their king, but Jesus knows they need salvation, not kingship. And that can only satisfy us. Our topic is satisfied. And I hope, brothers, that you have at least picked up some little things. We're in what kind of satisfaction do I need? The Bible says, if I have Jesus Christ, the Shadra already in for us is already. We, when you all have Jesus, you have everything. We have to confess as Lord. I don't have work yet now, but I have you. And that you will give me a very wonderful work with very good salary, very good benefits, and everything on time salary. I declared it. Amen. Yes, I, I had the same problem before. When I last time when when brother, what's the brother? What is the worship leader? Who is the worship leader last Friday? Sunday. Sunday. When brother Sunday came and asked for the prayer for those people who are working, looking for a job. I remember when I was looking for a job also. I was about to fly back to the Philippines uh, on November uh, last 2019. So, but the Lord is just so sweet. But whenever that I I fast and pray, he will immediately give me a specific position. And in my in I I had a dream. I hope that you would have the same uh, understanding of dreams and visions. When I had a dream, I was a receptionist, and so different people are there, and I don't know who are they. So I had different in uh, um, uh, um, interviews with very big companies 
but I end up in a small company. Because when pandemic came, I thank God for that. Because when pandemic came, this big company shut down. <laughs> but this small company was still striving, and now I'm still here for the glory of God for more than two years. Amen. And on that place that the Lord is, has told us also, that whenever that He puts you on that specific place, he, you will be His soul and light. Amen. Even how many Arabs came to our office because it's a German company and we are um, 26 employees with some are, we, we don't have Nigerian brothers there but we have so many Indians. And living in different beliefs is so difficult because they will ask you, who is Jesus Christ? Who has this one? Why do you smile? Why do you something like that? So many questions. But the, the Bible says we should have an answer. Because we have Jesus Christ in us, we should know how to answer them humbly. So there are some Muslims also who ask me, why do you worship Jesus Christ? And why do you immediately, uh, whenever the, the boss is gir 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 gir, <laughs> that means shouting, shouting, shouting. Okay. Um, I always smile. I told them that I don't want to give the peace that I have with you. Let him be bothered for so many trials with so many problems in the company, but I will not give my peace because it is for me. Yeah. So whenever that the boss is angry, praise the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> that means there is pressure, there is salary. <laughs> Hallelujah. And also, I would like to impart to you, brothers and sister, uh, brothers and sister of mine, that um, the Lord has put you in this place not only to give you the five loaves and two fish. He gave, he, he gave you, he wanted you to come here because he wanted you to give the multitudes. The gift of the Lord to us is not the physical good. It is the souls of the people whom we can give glory to the Lord because we have let them know who is Jesus Christ. And what is the ministry of Jesus Christ? It is what? reconciliation Jesus came here to reconcile with us so that we can be reconciled with the Father God because of sin he has been separated but through Jesus Christ we are satisfied we came back, we gained our authority we gained our citizenship so you are not only Nigerian citizens <laughs> we are not only Filipino citizens, but we are citizens of heaven. heaven. Yes. Okay, let us stand and let us pray. Father, we thank you and invest your holy name for your word, Lord God. Truly, indeed, that in you we are satisfied. You alone can satisfy the very needs of our lives, Lord God. Because as you have said in your word, Father, when we have Jesus Christ, we have everything, Father. Yes, Hallelujah. Lord. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for his compassion. And we pray, Father, that we may have the same compassion as how Jesus had towards us. We pray, Father, that you will guide us to see the things that the people need, O oh Lord God. And that needs is to have a reconciliation with you, yes, Jesus. Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray, O oh Lord God, as well. That as we draw near and near to you, Father, with the words that you have entrusted us, with the five loaves and two fish that we have in our lives, whether it is financially, whether we have shortage and problems in the family, whatever the aspect of our lives, Father, you are the one who will be able to multiply it, Father, and until to the moment that we will be able to have the other foods after this. Lord, you are amazing in everything that you are doing in us. Lord, we thank you for the word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the understanding. We thank you for the wisdom, knowledge, oh Lord God, that it comes from you alone. Hallelujah. Lord, you have given us your word that we are your chosen people. We are your priest and we are your holy nation. That we should show forth the praises of you who, come, who called us into your mark, wonderful light. Lord, you are the light of the world. You are the bread of life. You are the water who can fulfill yes, our Lord. thirst. And in you, O Lord God, we will never get hungry. We will never get thirsty. We pray also, O Lord God, 
that as we continue our journey in this world, may our feet walk to the path that you wanted us to walk. Amen. May everything that we touch, O Lord God, will give glory to your name. Amen. Whatever words that we will, that our mouth will speak will give glory and honor only to you, O Lord God. That it will speak love. It will speak grace. It will speak mercy. Amen. It will speak compassion. Amen. It will speak forgiveness to the people around us, O Lord God. Amen. Hallelujah. We pray also, O Lord God, that we will only hear your still small voice, God. May we have the same mindset as what Christ, as Jesus also had to us. And we may be able to see your goodness in every second, in every aspect of our lives. Lord, we trust you everything of all Lord God that we have read, we have heard from you. Yet, it's a very simple word that comes from you, O Lord God. But it reminds us that it is not the physical food that we need. It is only you alone can fulfill us. Our hunger, our thirst, the very small portion of our lives that only you can, only you can satisfy us. Hallelujah. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you for everything and we give back all the glory and honor belongs to you, Lord. In Jesus Christ, my name we pray. Amen. 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 Whatever we have. What is your 10% right now, brother? 
Look at yourself, examine your heart. What do I have? I might not have money this time. As I speak to you, maybe my, my finances is not enough. But what do I have now? Apart from financial, I have my effort. I have my time. I can sacrifice this to God. I can, can give this back to God. This can be my tent at this moment. Amen? Mm -hmm. As I go along, God is making myself, God is doing in process and back end to process my finances. Time will come that I will be able to give back to Him, whatever that He says there. That ten, that ten percent of my my fruit, my my crops, my fruits is my salary. Amen? Mm -hmm. And what else it says? But remember, brother, I understand, I know our situation right now is not it's not easy. We know we all know that. But God says, God's reminding us here. It says here. Uh -huh. It says in 2 Corinthians 9 7. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give. Not reluctant, not reluctantly, or under compulsion. For God loves a church forgiver. What does it mean to you, brother? What does it mean to me? What God wants us to understand in this? We can give without any murder, murmur. Give happily. You might not be able to give your tenth this time. But God is happy to see your heart. Whether it's a wonder ham, whether you don't give anything, your time, your effort to be here on time is enough for Him. At the end of the day, remember, God says our heart doesn't say our money, it doesn't need it. But why does we need to give this? Because, just like what we are doing right now, we need to reach more people. We need funds for our local church. We need funds to reach other lost souls, just like we used to be before. Someone someone put their tent, someone put their tights, now we are here together, enjoying the presence of God. Do you, do you agree on that? So let's uh, stand up. And whatever you have prepared, let's pray over it. And let's give back whatever is due to our living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Let's give up our offering and our time. We give you praise. We give you glory, O oh God. We thank you, Jesus, for your grace and mercy to us, O oh Lord. We are not worthy, but because your grace is sufficient to us, O oh God, we are here. We are able to stand. We are able to give our tent, O oh God, our time, our effort, O oh Lord God. Hallelujah. Lord, right now, we ask you, Jesus, humbly to receive it, O oh Lord God. Amen. Examine our heart right now, O oh God, as we give back whatever that we have, O oh Lord God. It might not be means of finances, O oh God, but our time, our effort, O oh God. May it be, Lord, acceptable unto you, Jesus. Cleanse this with your blood, O oh Lord God. Lord, have it received unto you, Jesus. Sanctify it, O oh God, that it will be used mightily, O oh Lord God, in the expansion of your kingdom works, O oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give you praise, O oh God. We speak blessings, O oh God, to the life of your children that is here right now, O oh God. We don't know what they need, O oh God. But we believe in our heart, in full faith in you, 100%, O oh God, that you have promised, O oh God, you will never leave us. You will never forsake us, O oh God. You will give what is our needs, O oh God, as we seek you more and more, O oh God. Hallelujah. We give you praise, O oh God. We give you glory, O oh God, in your holy mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.